So these I don't think I've covered before, mostly because uh, maybe I'm getting fussy in my old age, but I don't really consider them a massively useful edible. Um, but I know that a lot of people do, and uh, I have noticed on the groups recently a few people mistaking them for other things. So I thought we should go through the identification features of an amethyst deceiver. Um, which should be easy, except it's all in the name. Deceiver is uh, is quite apt. They do tend to change the way they look quite significantly over the course of their life as a, a fruiting body. Um, but there are a few things that we can run through that will stop you making any dangerous mistakes. Um, so, as you can see, an amethyst deceiver is purple. Um, and when it's young and fresh and beautiful, like this one that I've chosen to do my ID video with, um, it is really quite deep purple, very beautiful, kind of jewel-like across the forest. You can see it. I say that, depends what the habitat is. It often does a much better job at blending in than you would expect it to actually being purple. Um, but it looks, it looks fresh and purple and beautiful and quite distinctive. I'm going to line up a couple at different stages of their development next to it, just so you know where the deceiver name is coming from. So, this one is brown in the middle. Oh, really wish my phone would. There we go. Browner in the middle, striate or lined towards the edges. Just a bit paler underneath. Still an amethyst deceiver. Oh, here we go, look. I'll bring some in as we go. This one, scurfy on top. Uh, splitting at the edges as well as striate. All sorts of different things going on there. The stipes are quite different colours, you can see. Uh, and then, oh, let's go for this one which isn't even terribly old. You can see it hasn't opened up yet, but it's gone very, very pale. Um, it is still purple underneath though. Um, as they get really old, they'll get kind of big and wibbly wobbly and wavy, and I can't see any quite like that around here, um, but they do change significantly, as you can see, over the course of their lifetime. Um, and our identification features on them thankfully are always pretty much the same because they have to take into account the fact that these are changing so much. So they will always be, so amethyst deceivers specifically, I'm going to have to sit down again on the floor, um, amethyst deceivers specifically will always be purple. Uh, they will just be lots of different shades of purple so they can be anything from very pale to really quite deep purple. Um, they have these gills which are really beautiful pattern um, so they have very widely spaced gills for such a small mushroom and they have uh, smaller ones and then even smaller ones in between all of the full length gills um, which is a really nice identification feature um, just because not that other fungi don't have partial gills in between full gills just because the pattern on these is quite distinctive um, they, the gill attachment is of, often looks a bit different on different specimens. So I always think of them as being a decurrent and these ones are doing quite a nice little decurrent, but often they almost look adnexed with an imaginate tooth. They're quite, uh, because the cap shape and things can be so different, they can look a bit different. Um, another really nice identification feature is that you can just see in that one, I'm going to see if I can find a better example, um, but they have this kind of amazing fibrillose or fibery stem stipe. Yeah, so fibres running down it, silvery fibre looking. It's almost never completely straight and often those fibrous parts twist round the stipe. So it's doing it more on this one, but it's hard for me to show you because it's a... Uh, it's just not playing ball with the camera. But yeah, you might have to take my word for it that those fibres are kind of twisting around the stipe of the, the mushroom. Let's see while I'm sitting here if I can find you another. Um, so those, those are our identification features. The things that you would be concerned 
about mixing these up with. Um, I mean, I see people confuse them with Lapista, which are bluets. That's not a concern. Bluets are also edible. Um, the one that I've seen most recently is people confusing them with uh, lilac fibre caps. And lilac fibre caps are really quite dangerously poisonous. They're not... If, if you were to eat a meal of lilac fibre caps, you'd be in trouble. Um, uh, the, the way that you can be certain that you haven't got a lilac fibre cap, I mean... They are much more fibrillose on top. They tend to be more kind of pointy in the middle, almost kind of conical shaped, uh, but sometimes more broadly. It might be hard to say. But if you turn a lilac fibre cap upside down, and at some point, again, I will see if I can find one and, and make a video on that. Um, the gills underneath are not this deep purple. And on a, an amethyst deceiver, even if it's quite pale on top, they have these deep purple gills. A lilac fibre cap has kind of greyish... Uh, almost greyish turning kind of tobacco-y brown slowly over time um, and they're much closer together the gills on a, a lilac fibre cap um, and yeah they, they tend to have a slightly under rolled margin around the edge um, they just look very different underneath um, from this so if you think you found amethyst deceivers Checking the, the gills is your first step to making sure that you're not in lilac fibre cap territory. Um, and just doing a, a good compare of both species uh, in your books, just to be sure. Um, there are other uh, purple mushrooms that I'm not covering here. They're mostly quite big or quite scaly or like just quite different looking to me. Much more kind of robust, thick stipes, things like that. Um, but the lilac fibre cap is the one I think that I, I get concerned that people are going to mix this up with. Um, so yeah, if you're enjoying the videos and you're finding them valuable and useful, I am going to pop my buy me a coffee link underneath. Uh, I'm not making any money by doing this at the moment. So if you, if you feel that's worth contributing to, it's very welcome. Uh, and if you are local to me in Sussex, do feel free to uh, message me and I'm running fungi walks at the moment. Enjoy your foraging.